If you're watching this channel, it's because you don't enjoy watching the world squander what Christendom built, but you want to do your part. And chances are you've heard me mention a great means by doing just that. Email made by and for Catholics. Check out fide.email. That's F-I-D-E-I dot -E email. Built for Catholic individuals, families, organizations, and groups. They're private, secure, and of course, they're Catholic. And they're offering two months off on your first year for an annual subscription if you enter the coupon code return to tradition without spaces that's the name of this channel without spaces at checkout seemingly lately i've been having to talk to you about happenings in the secular world with the secular authorities trying to force catholic countries to do different things catholics face un frankly unprecedented pressure from the secular world at least in our time whether it's uh, suspicious people in the pews making sure that your traditional mass isn't some sort of threat to the order of things, or if it's secular figures in uh, Central America basically declaring open war on the Catholic Church, these kind of stories are, I get the feeling, going to be more common now. Fortunately, I have another one for you today, and it involves everyone's favorite international secular organization, the United Nations, an organization that Catholics helped found, if you can believe it, and it was founded to do laudable things. On paper, what they told us was laudable, preventing major wars from breaking out, being a forum for countries to come together and solve their problems before conflict breaks out, as well as uh, helping to deal with international natural disasters and that kind of thing. Nobody really has a problem with that stuff. It's just the rest of the things they do that people start to question, because it turns out that they are the blueprint for and sort of the pillar organization, as well as a few other organizations, for creating a sci-fi Star Trek-style planetary government. That's what people want to do with it. So it's always odd when you start seeing them try to flex political power and flex and push pressure on the national governments of various places, because they are the sovereign authority in their country in theory. We have this story now involving what other, what else but the uh, sacrificial offering to Moloch, we'll call it. Can't use the uh, A word on this platform typically without getting into some trouble, but in general, that's what they want to do. They want to force a Catholic country to make this legal. And uh, the government there has signaled that they're open to doing this. Yeah, what... I, just a reminder, your Catholic politicians are often not. So we go to Info Catholica for this unfortunate headline. UN pressures Poland to make the sacrifice to Moloch legal. The UN body that focuses on the rights of the ladies released a report this week accusing Poland of violating their rights by restricting that living sacrifice to the devil. Okay, I know, that's not exactly the headline they publish, but it's a much more honest reading of it than using the accepted sanitized word would give you. And who is surprised that the United Nations is doing this? On their own website, they brag about doing this work, as you can see right here, pushing the sort of the American secular left-wing line about the sacrifice to the devil. They've been doing this for decades, often funded by money from our own government, because of course they are. That's how this works. Our government, governments like them in typically Western Europe, will help push this. They consider this a cornerstone of a modern rights-based framework for the secular world, in a particular reading of it. They've been the biggest advocates for it, and is why some people on the more sensible side of the political aisle in the secular world tend to say, hey, maybe Christian countries shouldn't have anything to do with that organization. Fortunately, uh, it's a losing proposition to tell your government or for a politician to seek public office on the platform of leaving that organization. That's usually the sign of being declared by the rest of the world as a pariah country. You don't want that, unfortunately, even though getting their scorn is a badge of honor. Here are the details of the story. Quote, The CEDAW committee urges Poland to support the right to sacrifice to Satan as a fundamental right and to adopt standards in line with the guidelines of a redacted organization behind the 2020 mess, including the quote, total making legal and, well, legalization of the sacrifice to the devil. 
Polish Prime Minister Tusk recently told reporters that, quote, there will be no majority in this parliament for this process being legal, in the full sense of the word, until the next contest. Let us not kid ourselves. Tusk, wa Tusk won his contest to a four-year term of service last fall and is leading a coalition government with divergent views on the issue. The CEDAW committee report was in response to information submitted by pro-sacrifice activists, including the a Center for Such Evil Diabolical Rights, alleging that such restrictions in Poland violated the terms of the treaty, which Poland has ratified. The committee has a long history of pressuring countries to liberalize such laws, despite the fact that the treaty does not mention the sacrifice to Satan, either explicitly or euphemistically, and there is no internationally recognized right to that sacrifice in any UN Human Rights Treaty or General Assembly resolution. Earlier this year, Poland was the subject of a report by the UN Special Rapporteur on, the, on violence against those who would get such a procedure done, which also focused on, of course, that ritual. Like the committee report, it urged Poland to align its diabolical laws with, quote, international standards and to strictly regulate the use of conscientious objection by health care providers. End quote. I don't even want to force a Catholic country to adopt it. They want that Catholic country's government to force people in the profession of healing to become the temples of, or become the high priests and priestesses of their satanic, satanic offerings. Are you surprised by this? You shouldn't be. Here's what will happen if they do this. Ireland fell a few years ago, and once that happened, the faith seemingly collapsed, or so it appears from the outside looking in. Ireland gave in on this issue and on the James Martin parody of holy matrimony, both because of pressure from this and because of the activities of internet of often American-based political actors. For those watching in Ireland, is that basically how it played out, having lived through it? Because that's how it looks from the outside, watching it. Once the sacrifice to Satan was made legal there, and the parody of holy matrimony that makes James Martin prance around with glee were both made the law of the land, the faith basically collapsed. Do I have that right? Let me know if you're right in Ireland, if I have the basics of that right, although I know there's more to it than that. But I'd be interested in finding out. But this international organization is basically the new Tower of Babel. And like the builders of the Tower of Babel, this organization is so prideful that it thinks it knows better than God on this issue. Which is odd, because while I am not a believer that we worship the same God as uh, the other major signer, we'll say, of the Abu Dhabi Declaration on Human Fraternity, you know, they come from the uh, Holy Land and generally get accused, credibly, of making a nuisance of things and being kind of, uh, we'll say, violent. I am surprised that they're going along with this, because they usually are pretty good on this, at least in America. Although, I've heard it said that they tend to be okay with this satanic offering, too. For those who think, though, that Poland won't tolerate this, think again. As you heard in that quote, the politicians have already told the, those policymakers that they will do their best to comply following next year's political contest. So get ready, Poland. This is going to be as front and center on, in your process as you've probably ever seen. Get ready, and everybody start praying now that they have victory, that the, that the forces not aligned with evil are victorious in this. Back to this article from InfoCatolica. Quote, Poland responded to CEDAW by expressing, quote, its commitment to ensuring equal access to health services provided by national law, including the sacrifice to Satan. They quoted Tusk's first political speech, where he insisted that under his leadership, quote, women will experience a radical improvement in their rights, dignity, health, and safety. The Polish government defended the expertise of its professional bodies charged with creating standards for identifying what constitutes a, quote, threat, well, constitutes a, the typical reason that you find in some of the more restrictive places where they still allow it, which is always nonsense. It is necessary to underline the development of such medical guidelines should be left to scientific societies. They also defend their legal and medical procedures, arguing that patients are not denied access to either care or information. Conspicuously absent from the response was any defense of legal protection for the most vulnerable, including their right to exist, nor was there any mention that the committee was, exist was exceeding its mandate by insisting that Poland accept the sacrifice to Satan as a fundamental right. The center... The nonprofit agitating for this said Poland's response focused primarily on implementing existing laws rather than on additional legal reforms, which it insists are urgently needed. 
These reports on Poland are not legally binding and cannot compel Poland to make any specific action on the issue at hand. Nevertheless, the fact that they imply a right to that topic does not exist is consistent with the long-standing strategy for that NGO and its allies in the UN human rights system to, to create such a right over time through customary international law. The notion that the sacrifice to Satan is an international right, or that these entities have the capacity to do so, is an assertion that requires a stronger counter-argument than the current Polish government is prepared to provide. End quote. In other words, this is their modus operandi. They've done this in other places. And now they're focusing on Poland. Poland is one of the few countries in Europe that the international community looks at and salivates at flipping. They used to do that to Ireland, and then they won there. Someday there will be a religious revival in Ireland. Hopefully one will happen in Poland soon to send those, send those public servants packing who would even open the door to this and have signaled their expressed intent on making this happen. Pray for Poland. Let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. To like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. And, as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Have a